What's up, everyone? It is Fido from Self Taught Hustle back at it again. And today I wanted to do essentially a post game analysis on the tutorial series that you guys saw this week, which was a breaking out of tutorial hell. And the video series was based on the fourth step of the, the diagram for how to break out a tutorial hell. And uh, the fourth step is a tweaking the code, right? So the first three steps are getting the tutorial, learning the concepts from the tutorial, and then copying the code that uh, is in the tutorial. And you guys essentially saw a very in-depth overview of the fourth step, which is tweaking the code. Now, what I wanted to do is just get a little bit more elaborate on that fourth step and walk you guys through the process that I went through, because it, it, it is a step-by-step -step process to help you guys break out a tutorial hell. Now, where we'll start off is the first and maybe the most important part of how to tweak the code, which is to define what you want to adapt in the existing code, or in our case, the existing calorie counting application. What I wanted is that I wanted the application to add the total amount of grams of protein that I ate throughout the day, right? So that I defined that. I said, okay, I want this application to do this. And once I was able to define what I wanted, then I went ahead and did the next step which is to create a to-do list, right? A, a technical to-do list of what I needed to do in order to build what I wanted, right? And to put a little bit more detail in there, the two things that I focused on within that to-do list, like the two big concepts to understand from that to-do list is that I wanted to collect the data that represented uh, the, 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 the protein value, right? And then I wanted it to then display that data back onto the application and have an aggregate total of, you know, the amount of grams of protein that I ate throughout the day, right? So quite simply, collect the data, shoot it back on to the application so that the user could see it. In that case, the user would be myself, right? So the reason why that uh, to-do list is helpful is because one, it keep, uh, allowed me to keep track of where I was at at any given time. With a, a code base that you're either unfamiliar with or you haven't seen in a really long time, it's gonna be really important to refer back to that to-do list if you ever have to go and do something else or you get distracted. And like, for example, in uh, the process of recording uh, that video series, I had you know multiple disruptions with the recording. The microphone was off on one of, uh, on one of the recordings. Uh, Sometimes I had to go and take a break and, you know, when I had to come back and look at the code, it was really easy to, for me to pick back up where I left off because I, I, I identified what step I was on, right? So that's always going to be extremely helpful in order for you to not lose your way as you go and you start to tweak the code. And then the second reason why it's super important is because it gives you a, a guided step-by-step, -step, defined by you for sure, but it does give you a guided step-by-step -step of what you need to do in order to build the thing that you want, right? And that's that's just a super helpful to kind of give it to because it gives you a sense of direction as you work through the code again when you're unfamiliar with the code, it can feel like you're working through this like jungle in this maze. But if you can define what you want, not just defining what you want, but having a step-by-step a, a -step process of how to get there, um, it's gonna, your brain's gonna say, okay, well, because I know what I need to do in this step, I, it, you're gonna feel even more confident as you go through and really understanding what you need to do to complete this step, right? It, it's gonna help you kind of fill in the gaps, if you will. So that's really, really, really important. And then be flexible with it to-do list. You guys saw that as I um, got through the code and became more and more familiar with it, my to-do list became a little bit more specific. You know, I started to understand that it wasn't just the, the, the meal object that I wanted to represent, but it was the meal object, uh, the value that was being contained in that, in that protein property within the meal object that I wanted to display, not just a meal object. And you guys saw me add onto that list, that specific point onto that list toward the end of the video series, right? So it's okay if you don't know like all the specific details of how to build what you want but if you could identify maybe you know three to four steps of what you think is going to require for you to get there that's going to that's going to help tremendously uh, along your path of uh, tweaking the code and then once you you have that to-do list go ahead and uh, start hacking you know 
Make sure that what you, as you're reading the code, uh, go ahead and describe what you're seeing. You know, like you guys saw me do that in the recording, uh, both so that you guys could understand my thought process, but also that is what I do on a regular basis. If I'm not familiar with the code, I, like a whole line of code, I'll just start describing what I see. Like that's an array, that's a data object, that is a string, that's a number, you know, that's a variable, uh, it's, it's stuff like that, right? And that stuff is like super helpful because if you you think about it, you could kind of think about it in the metaphor of a sentence or a word, right? When you're looking at the word, you're actually really identifying each little piece of every little letter in that word or in a sentence, you're identifying every word. And then collectively, when you identified enough words or enough letters, you could read the word or you could read the sentence, right? And that at that point, that's when you say, okay, because I could read the sentence, my best guess is that a period would be really good here at the end of the sentence, right? Like the code that you add on, it's like, okay, I could read the code and my guess get my my best guess is that I could add this little piece of code, right? And that's that. That's exactly how it works. Is you 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 under you identify the little pieces, right? The little letters or the word for the sentence and you say, okay, cool. I, I can read the full sentence. So I think uh, an exclamation mark or a period will be good here. Right. And that's, that's the process. And then, um, the second one is to Google obstacles. Like, so Google obstacles are things that you're curious about. Now I've been coding for a while now, uh, heading into three, about three years relatively. So, um, I get the, the things that you saw me Google, which was that pipe function. And then it was the map function off of that Ramda library, that stuff. Sometimes I could kind of see around the corner and you can see where I'm going to get stuck. So I, pro I proactively looked up some of those, uh, the definitions of those functions, but, um, you might not be able to do that right off the bat, but if you get stuck, it's, it's the same process. Go and Google where, where you're stuck, go and Google the, the pieces of code where you're stuck. Right. And, and, and learn more about them, you know, because once you do learn more about them, all of a sudden you have that, that, that knowledge, you, you take back that, that knowledge to your code base and you can read the code a little bit better. Right. Which is, which is what I did. Right. The only difference is that you guys didn't see me run into a huge obstacle there because I, uh, because I, I proactively looked for those things, but it doesn't mean I didn't have a whole slew of problems, um, let alone with the recording, but there was also problems related to, honestly, there was like 30 minutes where I had to stop recording because I was like, these guys are just watching me like not understand this code for 30 minutes straight. And I, and, and there wasn't a whole lot of talking. Like I, I, I stopped the recording and for 30 minutes, I just was pretty much just analyzing the code, just understanding as much much as I could. And then once I thought, okay, I'm at a point now where I can make this viewable again, that's when I started recording again. So be patient with yourself. It's not going to come to you right away. I mean, it, it didn't come to me right away and, I, and I'm experienced, but nonetheless, you know, I, I was pretty efficient at solving it. That doesn't mean that when you get to it, doesn't mean that you're not going to go through the same process. You're going to go through the same process. You may just not be able to do it as fast, right? So you have patience and have faith in that process because you're going to be going through the same process. The only difference is it might take you a little bit longer, right? I've I've already worked that muscle in my brain multiple, multiple times, right? Uh, you know, time and time again, practice tons, 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 tons. And you may be, you know, it's, it's like the gym. It's like I could squat 335 now. You may only be able to squat 275, right? But if you, but if you keep practicing, practicing, you, you'll, you'll, you'll get up to the, the 335 very easily and you'll be able to do it for reps, right? So don't, don't be so worried about, Hey, am I doing this right? Be more, be, just be focused on, okay, it's, it's the right thing to do. It's just, it's going to take me a little bit longer to get to the solutions that I want. Right. And then say you've, uh, described what you're seeing and you've also started to Google, you got stuck, maybe you didn't get stuck, but you're Googling the things that you're curious about in the code. Now you, you, you're getting that confidence to say, okay, I think I'm ready to add the period to the sentence. I think I'm I'm ready to add that exclamation mark to the sentence. I'm thinking I'm ready to add that code. Okay. Well, when you add your code, make sure that you test it right away. What you don't want to do, and you guys saw me do this in the tutorial is you don't, um, you, you, whatever code you write, write you want to test it right away because what you don't want to do is you don't want to write like three lines of code and then not having tested each one of those lines and then go to, uh, go to, go to test it and then run into an error and it's going to be harder to identify. It's essentially the problem there is that it's going to make it harder for you to identify where along that code, um, you, the, the error occurred, let alone if those three lines interact with each other, it's just going to make it more confusing to identify where that error happened. And it's get you going to get you more stuck than you need to be. Right. So every line of code that you, that, that, that you write, especially, especially in a uh, set, a, a code base that already exists, make sure that you test it because if you, if you break it, you want to know right away where it broke. Right. And that, that's gonna, that's gonna be, be helpful. Save you guys a lot of time. 
And then um, the fourth thing is to take it to its finality here is complete the list. You know, the list that you created, go ahead and complete each one of those steps because by the time you get to that last step, you have built what you want in uh, in the application. You guys saw that live, you know? Um, that's, that's the most important thing is to just make sure always go back to that list. Have I knocked this out, knocked that out, knocked that out? Okay, I knocked this out too. All of a sudden you're done with the application, you know, or you've, you're done with what you wanted to build in the application. So yeah, so that, so that was it. I mean, I want wanted to give some like just off the cuff notes here too it, and uh man it was that 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 application was not easy um especially starting out but as i went uh you guys saw me that as i started to continually like work at it i became more and more comfortable with the code base and that and that'll that'll happen to you too is after you've worked with the problem long enough you start to kind of familiarize yourself with what's what and it starts to become easier and easier to to, to solve essentially the rubik's cube that you're working with because you're just more familiar with the nature of it um, especially as time goes on so but you know make sure to give it that time because you know maybe the the first quarter of you working with the code base is a little bit difficult but if you because you give it that time that that middle section to final section of, of the build will start to flow a lot better and once you start to get into that flow state that's what that's when it gets kind of crazy and addicting because I was really enjoying it toward the end there because I was like, man, I literally I, I went from struggling. I went from struggling super hard with it to finally being able to like kind of get over the hill with it. And um, once I got over the hill, then it started to th that's when you start to feel like you kind of start to bend things to your will, <laughs> which is more of an advanced thing. But uh, no, definitely stick it out to you get to a point where you're like it's it's becoming so familiar that the solutions are becoming a little bit easier for you. And that, that may not happen all right away. But nonetheless, um, that was like something that i that i took into account that i thought was really cool other than that man yeah that's that that is a process of how you tweak the code and it's the most important part of, because that is how you escape tutorial hell but either way that was it for uh tonight guys so thank you guys so much i really appreciate it for all the soldiers who followed through the video series throughout the week um let me know what you think about this content i think that the market is really in necessity of breaking you guys out of tutorial hell and that's that's what i wanted to focus on and i wanted to deliver this value to you guys right here on the channel um, um, so yeah, uh, come and check me out at uh, Self Taught Hustle on IG. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends that Self Taught Hustle exists, and uh, share the video as well if you guys think that this would be uh, super helpful. So uh, thank you guys, and I will see you next time.